or fostering it. So, so the, those banks were giving out loans, knowing full well that they were giving it to people who they were not going to get well. Most people don't care. They know that they were not going to get their money back, and they were doing that because the government was telling them to do it. Correct. And supplying the money through the, Fed, the central bank to finance it. And, they, and because they go, look here, if I make a bad loan, it's not going to fall upon me and my depositors or my shareholders. The government has guaranteed it. Or, based upon some experiences in previous decades when there have been banking crisis, we think we're too big to fail. So the government will come in and bail us out. Well, in economics, that's called moral hazard. Have you ever heard this term, moral hazard? Okay, the, the best way to think about it this way. Johnny runs up his credit cards to their maximum and now can't pay off his minimum payments. And on top of that, he crashes his car into a tree. Now, Mommy says, oh, Johnny, don't worry. Dad is going to pay off your credit cards and you know, keep your record clean and with zero balances now. And Daddy is going to take care of the insurance claim and take care of the cost of your car, too. What lesson will Johnny learn from this? That every time he acts irresponsibly with his finances or drives recklessly with his car, Daddy's going to foot the bill and take care of him. So is he going to act more responsibly or less responsibly now? Yes. Well, this is the thing that, that if, if you know that someone is going to subsidize your mistakes or your losses, then you're going to be less cautious to be careful and risk managing your affairs. Now, the banks came to know, because the government, the U.S. government had bailed out some banks before in a handful of crises over the last 20, 30 years, that if they were viewed as essential, too big, then even if they acted irresponsibly, and had been forced to, to do this by these government agencies, the money made available by the Fed, they weren't going to have to use the phrase to take a haircut, right? Isn't that the language, right? You have to take a cut in your, in, in your share values, or you have to write down the value of your investments in your portfolios. Don't worry. The government will bail you out. And that's what happened. All, virtually all the big banks who acted in this, in this object, you know, broader sense, irresponsibly, knew that there was no cost to acting irresponsibly. And virtually, except for Lehman Brothers, every other bank got bailed out. You know, I, I was doing some uh, regular uh, analysis of uh, economic trends and factors when the economy in the U.S. was going through really the downturn, 2008 into 2000, most of 2009. And so I was looking at the unemployment statistics, not just in general for the U.S., but sectorally, like in construction, farming, entertainment, you know, the subcategories of the employment figures. You know what happened in the finance and banking sector? Virtually no increase in unemployment. Because the government was pouring so much money in that nobody from the top executive to, to, to the teller at the, at, at, the, at, you know, at the counter in the bank, nobody lost their job. Because they knew that if they acted unwisely, Uncle Sam would bail them out. And the US government did. So it's not surprising that they acted irresponsibly any more than Johnny would now continue to act irresponsibly if he knew that Daddy was going to take care of his repair bills and his credit card balances. So between government and business, both of them, in a way, acted irresponsibly. Yes. And well, let's so put between the capitalists and the government. I, I don't disagree. But the banks could not have acted irresponsibly, or there would have been a clearer sense of the cost if they acted irresponsibly, if the government basically hadn't guaranteed and subsidized the irresponsible behavior. Let's suppose you know someone who's susceptible to, to drinking too much, okay? You know someone who's susceptible to drinking too much, and he's in a bar, and you come up to him, and you say, let me buy you a drink. Let me buy you another drink. Let me buy you another drink. And before you know it, the guy's totally drunk, goes out, drives his car, and gets into an accident. And you're saying, I'm shocked! I'm shocked. Why did he act so irresponsibly? He knows he can't handle his liquor. Of course, you fed him the drinks. No, but you see I the mean, analogy I'm making. I, I understand that analogy, but a more clear analogy in a. I mean, using your your um, the capitalist answer would be that you go to a bar and you meet a person who does not have a drinking problem, and you ask them if they want a drink and another drink and another drink. I mean, using your analogy of. Your, your, your concept of what would, be, what would happen had we not have the government. 
when they these parts, when these parts still be greedy and do certain things that they're not supposed to do. I would argue that in general, no, because I mean, because the reason being is if that if they issue loans to people that do not meet creditworthy standards and the probability of defaults therefore increase because of the people they've made the loans to, and the loans start failing, guess who it falls upon? Them. And, the, and therefore, that, to use the phrase, there's immediately the negative feedback. And they either have to start managing more intelligently and judiciously and carefully their lending practices, or they're going to keep losing money. How does that affect the shareholders and the depositors' attitudes towards them? See, the market has its own negative feedback. But the government wasn't allowing the feedback to work. Are we about out of time for the break? I'm just concerned about staying on schedule. Are we okay? One more Don't question. Make, oh. One more? Okay. Um, how will creating money out of thin air affect the exchange rate in the future? Uh, it will make the value of the dollar as it's now falling more and more. I mean, Ben Bernanke, the chairman of our central bank, the Federal Reserve, uh, did, did, did a press conference. I mean, I guess he views himself as a rock star now or a sports person, you know, with the press press session after, you know, having a meeting. Uh, and what did he basically say? He said that uh, America is not facing inflation and that, he's, that the Federal Reserve is going to keep its steady policy of obviously <laughs> printing enough money to keep interest rates, uh, you know, the, the leading interest rate, the, the prime interest rate and others, virtually at zero. And how are currency dealers around the world viewing that? That money is going to keep being created the inflation, in spite of what Bernanke is saying, is going to remain a continuing danger just over the horizon of rising prices, depreciated value of the dollar. And anticipating that, they've been dumping dollars on the foreign exchange. Who wants to hold money that's going to lose value down the road? So as long as the Federal Reserve car, uh, uh, follows this policy, uh, the dollar will continue to depreciate, particularly in the face of the fact that other countries are raising their interest rates. The Chinese have risen their interest rate. I was just reading this morning before I came here. Uh, uh, the Indian government has raised their interest rate because they're trying to rein in inflationary forces. Well, if, it's, if, if you can get a high rate of interest uh, holding your money in China or in India or, or, or in, 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 in the European Union, they jacked up their interest rate slightly. Well, where are you going to put your money? In a, in, in a financial institution where you can earn interest rate X plus 2? Or hold your money in a place where you're earning barely X. Are you going to put it where you can get a greater rate of return? That means leaving the dollar and putting your money into euros or or uh, or, or uh, rupees. So this is just going to exacerbate and reinforce the fall of the dollar. Okay, we probably should take a break. So we'll be back in about uh, 15 minutes. Okay, thank you.